Hiya, today I'm going to be vlogging again. Um, now I should have started vlogging before I left the flat, uh, but I completely forgot. I don't know, like I'm not, I'm not like fully in the flow of this uh, vlogging lifestyle yet, clearly. It's only when I was walking down I thought to myself, oh damn, I should probably um, jump on and show a bit of my morning as well. So, today I'm going to be training with a very good friend of mine. I'm just going to put my glasses down because the wind is blowing as making my eyes work. I'm going to be doing my sumo workout, but it's probably my least favourite workout of the week. Um, I don't know why. I think partly because um, at the moment, sumo, I'm very much doing like a bit of a rehabilitation because I injured myself. Um, so it's very much just like going through the motions with sumo. And my bench has also regressed recently because I've just been doing less upper body work. So I guess this session very much feels like my sort of going through the motions, laying foundations sort of day and sometimes they can be a bit boring so this is what i love about power building is that you've got your meat and potatoes lifts which are your squat bench and deadlift but then you can so easily um spice up the workout by using your accessories but right now i'm just walking down to pret to get my morning smoothie um i've recently signed up to the pret subscription now funnily enough i'm not actually that much of a coffee person which i know is quite unusual for a lot of people in the fitness industry and especially like people of this age group I just feel like you know that whole butt first coffee hashtag you know um, I'm not really that big on coffee but I got the Pret subscription when I realized I can get the smoothies with it because the smoothies are a particular one the sweet greens it is just oh my god so once I realized I can get that on subscription I got it and I've been having like at least one of them a day so I'm going to get my first one. And as I'm on a bit of a health kick at the moment, um, so not just like looking at my macros and stuff like that, it's more of a real health kick. I spoke about this in one of my previous videos that like healthy eating isn't always like the leanest eating. I just feel like over the past few months it's been very much about like getting enough food in, making sure you're hitting macros. And sometimes when you've got that sort of mindset, you do find yourself filling up the macros with, um, some foods that are just like like filler foods so like more sugars and more stuff like that so i'm on a bit of a health kick at the moment specifically looking to reduce inflammation and restore balance in my body so this is part of my health kick so yeah once i get there because my arm's about to fall off now but once i get there <laughs> i will show it to you and i'll show you what it's got in it and i'll make sure you give it a try because it is just Ta-da! It has got avocado, uh, mango, kale, apple, and I think that's it, lime. Oh, it's lovely. Okay, I'm back, ready to go. I'm just making my pre, my intra workout, which is water, obviously. And then I put some of this in there. And this is really good for like muscle cramps. But outside of that, it's really good for like your um, digestive health. It's got magnesium in there, so it's just really good. It's got all your key minerals in it. And a lot of the water that we drink, even though it's called mineral water, it doesn't have enough minerals in it to support what we're doing. So especially as people that train hard, um, you do need like more minerals. So I pop that in there. It does make it taste a little bit funny if you put too much in, but I just put a couple of drops. And then I also stick one of those in there as well. Now, um, antioxidants isn't something that I've spoken about much on my channel yet, but I am going to do a post on it because it is so important. Um, but yeah, so I stick one of those um, vitamin C's in there and that's going to accelerate my healing process and it's also going to minimise free radical damage that is caused by training as well. And they happen to taste quite nice as well. So sometimes when you're training, you just want like a little bit of sweetness, even though these don't have actual sugar in them, they just have sweetener, but... You know, sometimes when you're training, you just feel like, oh, I need the glucose, man. So, yeah, <laughs> you just take a bit of that, and I just find it works really nicely. And then also for my pre-workout meal, I've got oats with blueberries. I'm absolutely obsessed with frozen blueberries at the moment. Not only are they much more economical choice to make, um, they're like £2.30, maybe £2.20 for a bag of 400 grams, as opposed to £2.30 for 125 grams fresh blueberries. And they're just nice, like, you know, they're just nice. I think when they're frozen as well, mm, mm, it just feels like more of like a little, a little sweet. So I'll have those in the evening. Instead of like actual sweets, I'll have like some blueberries after my dinner. But they make your lips turn blue, so it can 
kind of make you look like a little bit deoxygenated. <laughs> but yeah, no, apart from that, all good. Go ahead. Sorry. Go on. Okay, so I've just met my lovely Megan. Here she is. <laughs> Um, we're at Batch & Co which is in Streatham and it does the best coffee um, so just having a quick coffee and oats Megan's already had hers because she's a little gannet and then we're gonna make our way to the gym and get on with it okay so we just arrived at the gym and funnily enough I actually went out last night and I had dinner and a couple of drinks and uh, my recovery is really down this morning um, if you haven't seen my video about the whoop, I'm going to link it above. My recovery is in the red today. Um, that's, all, that's always such a shame because um, it just feels like, you know, you can't go out and enjoy yourself without it, like, hindering your training. But anyway, it's what it is. So I'm here and this morning I was like, felt completely fine. Even though I woke up and I was in the red, I was like, okay, I feel fine. So let's just see how we go. But it's now, like, gone two o'clock and um, I actually just feel like really flat now so yeah we're gonna see how this session goes and typically sumo and bench tends to give me a bit of a headache anyway because the amount of like pressure that you're building up and obviously with bench as well you're getting a lot of work activation around the traps and stuff so sometimes I have been known to get a bit of a headache when I do um, heavy benching so <laughs> yeah I'm just hoping it doesn't compound the effects of my night out from last night but we'll see how we go Okay, so as always, we're starting off with a bit of stretching, a bit of mobility. But I always like to make sure that my hamstrings are really well warmed up, as well as my adductors. I find the tennis ball really useful for lots of things, um, but here I'm using it to mobilise that um, point of connection where my adductor hits the pelvic bone. So I just like to get that tennis ball right in there and just manipulate that tissue. Now I spent a lot of time sitting down, so, I, so this little movement here is just making sure that the hip flexor gets a nice good stretch so it's nice and open and ready for me to get to work. Okay, now moving on to the sumo deadlift. This is one of the reasons why I really like filming. Um, this is my first time doing sumo in probably a little over a week and I do feel a little bit stiff today. Um, but when I started doing this warm-up set, it didn't feel very different. However, as you can see, I just decided to quickly look back at the footage before I moved on to the next set. And you can see that this setup is really not looking so good. The hips aren't open, it just looks really sort of stiff and awkward. So I'm really glad that I decided to look at this footage before I increase the weights. As soon as I saw that the setup was not looking good, I decided to bring the weight back down and repeat that warm up set. And as you can see, this second warm up set looks a lot better. So, here you can see that I'm sinking the hips down a lot more, getting the hips a lot closer to the bar, and getting the hips a lot more open as well. And if I am having one of those days where my hips are just taking a little bit longer to open and not feeling as fluid as I'd like, then I will do a little bit of mobility in between sets just to keep everything nice and warm and limber. Okay, so now we've sorted that little issue out onto the working set now. This is week four of this block, so this is definitely hitting an RPE nine. So this is kind of the top sort of intensity that I'd be working with. So here we're hitting 100 kgs for eight repetitions. Um, and this is glass floor as well, so this is a lot of time under tension. This set was pretty challenging. I've definitely got one of those faces that makes everything look easier than it actually is because as you can see this actually really took a lot out of me I was absolutely blowing after this and during the session like this in particular I'm making sure that I'm taking my full three minutes in between sets definitely not rushing back in even once the breathing returns back to normal definitely not rushing straight back in making sure you're getting that full three to five minute rest um, so that you can let that nervous system kind of recalibrate and ready to hit that next set Okay, now moving on to bench. 
So we're doing comp bench today, so that means that we're giving a little pause in the chest before we press, which is the same sort of format that we'd find in a competition. Um, in my previous blocks, I've been doing a bit more of a, like a touch and go press. It's usually gonna let me get more reps. Um, and be really easy to fall into bad habits um, and sort of like get you out of practice when it comes time to actually compete again. And last week I made um, the mistake of skipping a warm up set. I was in a hurry and it completely gassed me out for my working set and I wasn't able to get the load at the RPE I was expecting. So just taking a bit of extra time, moving up in smaller increments, that really does prime the nervous system and help you get that bigger lift um, at a lower RPE, so less strain on the nervous system. So just bringing in my trusty spotter Megan um, to help me with my top set. So it's really useful for me. When I'm working at the top set, I like to get a hand off because it just conserves that energy of actually pulling the weight off the bar, off the rack. Um, so yeah, I always like to get a hand off for at least my top set. This was definitely an RPE 8.5, maybe even RPE 9. So as I was saying earlier, my bench has definitely regressed a little bit, um, but that's to be expected because I'm doing a lot less volume with my upper body at the moment. And then once I'm done with that, just a couple of back down sets just to get a little bit more volume in, but still working within that strength rep range. Okay, so moving on to good mornings. Now, this movement is not one of my favorites. It's up there with like Bulgarian split squats, you know how everybody hates those. I don't really like good mornings, but they are so good for developing your posterior chain strength for your squats. Um, so I'm making sure that I put them into my program. Now, I actually like to do these with my shoes off and I really ground my feet into the floor in the same way that I would for a squat or any sort of pressing movement. Using the same sort of tripod foot, the three point contact, I turn my knees out slightly to create that torque in the hips and then I start the movement. A lot of people forget that the glutes are actually part of the core and their main function is to stabilize the hips. So this is a really good movement for general core strength as well as strengthening the whole posterior chain. Next up I've got standing single leg hamstring curls. This is probably my favorite variation of a hamstring curl. I get a really nice stretch and it feels like a more functional movement to me than the seated hamstring curl or the lion hamstring curl. And one of my favorite cues when doing any sort of hamstring work, sometimes you can be tempted to try and finish the movement, contracting the lower back to get that extra bit of range. It's really important not to do that. So you'll see that I'm really trying to keep my hips pressed into the pad. But what you might be able to see is that as I get to the top of the movement, I'm slightly lifting my thigh away from the pad, really finish that movement and get that big contraction at the top, but I'm keeping my hips pressed against the pad and I'm keeping my hips stable. Last up, I got a superset. I didn't actually film the second half of this superset, but I did superset this with rear flies to develop the uh, rear delts. The first exercise that you'll see here is a single arm lat pull down. Being able to engage the lats is very important in a lot of lifting movements. And what you might be able to tell is that I'm almost twisting my shoulder down towards my hip. Now the lat actually wraps right into the spine and it does help to rotate the spine as well. So this isn't like poor form, this is actually just making sure that I'm getting that full contraction. If you really want to sort of like feel that big contraction and learn how to use the lats to control those upper back uh, joints, the shoulders, that's a really good tip that I um, have been using for some time now. And that concludes the end of the workout. So as I say, this used to be my least favorite day, like literally when I wrote this program, it was very much a functional day. I've actually come to really enjoy doing this day, which is often how it goes when I write my programs anyway. I hope you've enjoyed the video. This is just me and Megs um, getting our post-workout meal. This is standard procedure. Whenever we train together, we end up going and getting some nice food afterwards and having a really nice catch up. Because when we're in the gym together, we kind of arrive there and then separate and do our own things. Um, so it's a nice way for us to kind of like round up the session and catch up with each other. So I hope you enjoyed the video. 
and if you like this sort of thing please stick around and subscribe and i'll see you next time